This podcast brought to you by... At Zulu's Board Game Cafe in Bothell, you can feed your family, enjoy a frosty beverage, order a new game, and pick them all up curbside. Check out Zulu's food and beverage menu specials and game specials at ZulusGames.com. That's ZulusGames.com. Zulu's Board Game Cafe. Let's play. Gamers, unite! Safely. Zulu's Board Game Cafe in Bothell is now open for 25% capacity. Still not ready to venture out? No problem. Order to go food, growlers, and games for curbside pickup. Need some new magic or Pokemon games? Zulu's has them. Have cards you want to sell? Zulu's buys them too. Check out all Zulu's has to offer at Zulu'sGames.com. That's Zulu'sGames.com. Zulu's Board Game Cafe. Let's play! Safely. Ladies, gentlemen, geeks of all ages, you are now entering BJ Shea's Geek Nation. Welcome. Yes, welcome to BJ Shea's Geek Nation. I am the Reverend in Fuego. Across from me is Vicky Barcelona. Hello. The show's namesake, BJ Shea, is on assignment. Because I don't know what he's doing. But running Hi. the boards is Joey D's. Hi. On today's show, we will talk with Gareth Von Kallenbach from Skewed and Reviewed about all sorts of fun geeky stuff. We will also geek out about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We've got that more. And, of course, the Geek Sheet with Vicky B. Vicky, how can people get a hold of us? Get a hold of us via our website, bjgeeknation.com. It's going to have our blogs, podcasts, and more. more. Or just search for us, uh, BJ Shays Geek Nation, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, or the new Odyssey app. Yeah, lots of ways to get a hold of us, and uh, most of those ways have a way to give a review. So give us those five stars and give us some texts and tell us why you love us, because that'll be fun. I love that sort of thing. Uh, what are the big things? Quick news items. We talked recently about the new Magic the Gathering expansion called Strixhaven School of Mages, where you get to go and be Harry Potter and pick your own uh, school. Well, I mean, <laughs> in Magic Harry Potter. And uh, be able to pick whichever uh, uh, school that you want. We've gone across all of those uh, in a previous episode, but as of now, it's available on MTG Arena. There's a little bit of a downtime, so hopefully uh, you're able to uh, hold that off and uh, wait to play your uh, magical games and uh, experience some of all of uh, all of that. Download it on your phone. Mm. Oh, get it everywhere now. That's right. It's for the iOS now, so uh, good luck with all of your free time. Become addicted to casting magical spells. <laughs> I know that, Joe, you're going to be uh, uh, playing in some of the uh, events. Is uh, online on MTG Arena tonight. As a matter of fact, really I will be playing many a drafts. So uh, after uh, we'll kind of get a rundown next week on how you feel about uh, the set, how it drafts, and uh, maybe some tips and tricks. Will I be an apprentice or a master? <laughs> well, I feel that you've already kind of hit that sort of master level there. You could tell by my big wizard hat, couldn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, moving on from that, let's talk with our good friend, Mr. Gareth von. Colin Bach, because we do have some some very interesting news. Gareth von Colin Bach joins us from Skewed and Review. That is S K N R dot net. We've got all sorts of news about stuff like E three and the film industry, but we got to start off with some breaking news that you just found out about. Who's going to be joining what now? Well, apparently, according to reports, Mads Mikkelsen will be joining the new Indiana Jones uh, film, currently known as Indiana Jones 5, in an undisclosed role. Ooh. And uh, this has been, you know, ramping up because they announced casting about a week ago, said it's still on pace for summer of next year. So uh, it sounds to me like they're getting ready to be filming really soon. And it, I mean, going just along the lines of the uh, type of characters he's played in the past, usually it's a villain. And with Indiana Jones and all of that, I might be assuming he might be kind of in a Nazi role. But, I mean, we don't know yet. No, we don't. Could be could be Russians, too. We don't know what oh. the time frame of this one is. This could be in the 50s. It could be in the 60s. Oh, you're right. Um, yeah. 70s. You know, who knows? It, it'd be very interesting to see how it plays out. Absolutely. Very exciting to hear all about that, and we'll be getting more information as it comes along. Now, going back to, we talked about E3 a little bit uh, previously, and we've got a little bit more news about one of the companies that is going to uh, be there, because they have confirmed this. Correct. E3 has uh, started up with all of their uh, planning, and they made the announcement they're going to be having uh, uh, things for the press before the actual uh, dates of the show but Ubisoft, who had already been announced as taking part in the show, 
uh, announced today that their Ubisoft Forward, which is their uh, essentially showcase that they have done, um, has going to be folded in as part of the E3 2021 show. So they announced that Ubisoft Forward will take place at noon Pacific uh, on June 12th. So oh, good. Kind of gives you an idea that maybe some of the companies who did their own thing last year uh, are going to be uh, doing that and folding it back into the show and, you know, having more. And, of course, what we're going to see, who knows? I mean, I, I would assume Far Cry 6 is probably a safe bet. Uh, but, of course, there's all the uh, speculation, you know, beyond Good and Evil 2, stuff we don't know about, DLC for uh, existing games new announcements that's what makes it all fun you don't quite know what you're going to get <laughs> exactly so it'll be fun to see where it's going with that and yeah ubisoft did get previously announced but there's just the fact that there's more information coming out is very exciting um and then finally now kind of with the the meat and potatoes what's going on with this um the hollywood the hollywood and the whole industry i mean last year really threw everything into a tailspin and at this point it seems that i mean the we don't even know when some of the movies that were slated to come out are even going to be coming out they've had to keep on pushing movies back and then uh you know setting up new release dates and that really is affecting film promotions isn't it correct and what it is is that we now have a much bigger picture of some of the reasoning behind some of these delays. It was always assumed it was pandemic related, which yeah. was an excellent reason. And Godzilla versus Kong was drawing good box office. Some of the other films hasn't. Well, um, you're seeing kind of contradict your information. You're seeing mm -hmm. films like Godzilla versus Kong do very well. So people are going to look ahead toward Mortal Kombat, they're going to look ahead to things like Cruella and Quiet Place 2, which are scheduled for next month, and see where it's going. Because, as I said, everything seems very contradictory. Pacific and Arc-like theaters in California had announced the other day that they're closing and they're not coming back. And this is kind of uh, tragic because they also have like a domed Cinerama um, screen there that's a uh, landmark, very nostalgic. And in a recent survey of moviegoers, they found that 60% currently say they are comfortable going to the movies, which was at 52% a month ago. So you can see that there's this whole, okay, what are we going to do? You've seen Universal say, okay, boom, here's fan, you know, here's. Fast and Furious 9, we're pushing that for the summer. You've seen uh, Disney pushing Black Widow for the summer. And then you get news that Tom Cruise uh, pulled Maverick out of Top Gun Maverick out of July 4th to the Thanksgiving weekend, which in turn had a trickle down effect, which moved um, like the next Mission Impossible film back uh, almost a year, so on and so forth. But then other studios like Universal took the next Purge movie, which is said to be the final one, and said, fine, we'll take that July 4th slot. And then you scratch a little beneath the surface, and you get an idea as to what is going on behind this. Now, we've talked about CinemaCon, which is usually in March and April in Las Vegas coming up, and it's going to happen in August. And a lot of people I've talked to said, we fully expect it to still happen, barring a real massive downturn in this situation, largely because there's no public. It's the media. It's the studio exhibitors. They need to get together. This is an easy one to say you got to be masked, vaccinated or show, you know, a, a negative test to get in any you know deviation from wearing your mask. You're out. So people think this is going to happen. And also, this is the time of reconciliation for the studios. We found out that Tom Cruise is actually the one behind the delay of Maverick. Ooh, and you think, wow. okay, well, that's kind of, you know, why would he do that? And then you find the reasoning, and you're like, well, this makes perfect sense. And in many ways, I applaud him for doing this. It turns out Tom, who is known for his publicity, wanted to do a full-on world tour in advance of the opening. And his mentality was, if we do July 4th, due to the way many countries are with, like, Australia, you have to quarantine for two weeks, can't go into Canada right now, various places. His thought was, let's push it back until November. 
that way I can go out and do the proper publicity, and it's not just a bunch of Zoom calls and things like that. I can go in person, do the things the way I used to do them, and promote this film properly because I am, you know, that proud of it. It deserves proper promotion. And it also makes sense in the terms of you've seen, I don't know if you've seen it, but out there is he's freaked out, uh, you know, to people on set like the cast or not the cast, but the crew about abiding by the pandemic terms. And he really he kind of takes this whole thing under his own wing. This is his baby. All these Mission Impossible movies really are. So to see him have that level of responsibility putting on himself, it's it's commendable when it comes down to it. Exactly. I mean, we talked about he, how we went nuts on the set because they were one of the first to resume production. And he told him, he said, look, the industry is watching us right mm-hmm. now to see if we can do this, do it right and pull it off. And because of them, all these other shows are in production. And yes, there have been incidents where someone here has, has tested, someone here has got it. They've had to shut down production for a couple of weeks. But by and large, production is going along. And this is where we get back to it now, because the movies that are coming are the big budget films. These are the ones that were coming out last year, not to mention the ones that were already in the can for this year. Mm -hmm. And so with things like CinemaCon, the audience is starting to say we're ready to come back, but we're not sure. One of the best ways to do that is to get the people out on the Tonight Show's Uh, out on press tours and so on and so forth and not on a zoom call and And that's yeah you know the the red carpet event as it were where they can show up at the premiere to the paparazzi and all of that and have the you know the fighter plane sets outside and really build the hype up (laughs) you can't do that on a zoom call no you cannot and that's uh, the the biggest thing with that is they're trying to go back to i mean we're never going to go back to be perfectly honest to anything that was quote-unquote normal before but a sense of that and one of those things even if everyone's masked up being having the physical presence of the whole red carpet experience is exciting and that is what gets people excited and if it's going if you're doing this worldwide tour because a mission impossible film is a worldwide event and that's one of the things you got to look at it's not an indie film it's a blockbuster like you were talking about so you want to go to every single country it's going to be playing in so everyone feels like oh yeah i need to see this or else i'm going to be felt uh you know kind of out of the loop when it comes down to it Gareth Von Kallenbach from Skewed and Review, that is SKNR.net. Get information about all sorts of things, be it conventions, movies, comic books, toys, games, hardware, all that stuff. You can find it at Skewed and Reviewed, again, SKNR.net. Thank you, Gareth. Support for this podcast is brought to you by Salesforce. Salesforce, as in sales cloud? I've heard of it, but what does it do exactly? Can it help me stay? Speed up your revenue? Streamline your customers' buying experience? Well, Yeah, but can it... Skill up your reps and managers? Help them learn new products and processes? Sure, but I also need to... Scale up your operations. Quickly forecast with precision. Wow. Is it like magic or something? Nope. Just decades of innovation. You can grow fast with flexibility so you can truly be ready for anything. Anything? Can it entertain my kids while I do laundry? Uh, kinda. By boosting your team's sales productivity, you'll have all the time you need to... Finally take a shower and put on some clean clothes? Yep, you're ready for that, too. Thanks to Sales Cloud 360, the world's number one CRM. Learn more at salesforce.com slash boost sales. That's salesforce.com slash boost sales. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. Everybody appreciates a good connection. You know, someone on the inside that can get you such a great deal, you'll be obsessed with talking about how exclusive it was. But none of that's required to get surprisingly great rates from State Farm on car insurance. You'll be treated like a rock star just for being you. And do feel free to be obsessed with the great coverage options at prices that fit your budget. You just don't need someone on the inside to get them. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Anytime. Take care. Thank you so much, Gareth. Again, Gareth von Kallenbach from Skewed and Reviewed. And here's something that is very interesting. As of today, it is episode five of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We are not talking about that, but the interesting point about that is that this will be the penultimate episode. It only runs for six episodes. What? Yeah. I did not expect that. I was lied to. Uh, oh, you were lied to. I was told eight or ten. 
Uh, I think I might have told you that. You were the liar. Because, yeah, and that was because I just uh, figured that it would be at the very least eight episodes. Um, and usually these kind of hit the ten episodes. Wanda WandaVision didn't. It got to nine episodes, but that was because of the pandemic and trying to tape through that. I don't know if Falcon and the Winter Soldier had that issue or if they were necessarily going to be going across only six episodes. And this was the arc, but there's only two episodes left. They what? are long episodes. Yes. And that was another thing, too. Yeah, they're a little bit longer, so that kind of makes sense on that. Uh, and it looks like even um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier composer, Harry uh, Henry Jackman, says fans, quote, haven't seen half of what goes down as a tease for the final two episodes. So these last two episodes, things are going to be getting uh, crazy, which after this last one, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the final shot of this episode was our good friend John Walker having just uh, apparently decapitated a flag smasher in front of everybody holding the iconic Captain America shield with and tainting it. Uh, yeah, almost like it was reminiscent of the comedian's button in Watchmen mm-hmm. when you get that blood splatter on it. Except the comedian, you know, was a jackass like yeah. from the start. Well, OK, uh, fair, because this guy's a jackass now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but also the the big ep- the big thing with this episode was the fact that John Walker did take the super serum. Uh, he kind of had to get a little bit of confirmation from his uh, from his partner Battlestar, whom didn't make it through this episode. No. <laughs> and was the triggering effect of the said meltdown from uh, this quote unquote Captain America? God, I mean, he-, he is Captain America, but he's not my Captain I- America. I will say, okay, remember. We're talking about John Walker. We're mm-hmm. not talking about the actor Wyatt Russell. So for those who don't know how to make right. it, separate them. Because Wyatt Russell is doing a phenomenal job. And John Walker is a piece of crap. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that being said, like just seeing him go from like whiny baby mode. This is a guy who's always been able to be in charge. Who's always had everything. Like I don't want to say easy for him. But he's always come out the other side, and he's always looked like the hero. Mm-hmm. And for him, that whole fight with the the Dora, I, I just was it Dora or Dona? Uh, the flag smasher? No, 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 no. The 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 gals from Wakanda. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know for sure. It's hard to uh, explain. But there, yeah, the Dora Milaje. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm really yeah, the, I probably mispronounced it, no, but the the Dora, like, oh my god, yeah, they're the, phenomenal yeah, fighters. Yeah, the Wakandan royal guard, really, essentially, right. when it comes down to it. And for him, like that whiny moment where he's like, they didn't even have the super serum. Yeah, it's like you're not as badass as you think. You are never the biggest fish. Like, there's always going to be a bigger fish, especially in the MCU when you're talking about like street level characters, global level characters, which are what these ones are, and then the cosmic level right. characters, like they're is going to be a disparity between John Walker, the Captain America, and uh, Thanos, or mm. like, you know, you're never going to be the most badass person in the room. And right. this really showed that it doesn't even take superpowers to be really better than you at that point. Mm-mm. And it's also a whole, um, it really shows that he, it was never so much about um, like being strong enough to save people. Like, cause that's always what people say. It's like, oh, we could have saved a lot of people that day. However, I'm like, is that really the motivation? Like, yeah, you could have, like, because when he was uh, having that conversation with Lamar or Battlestar, mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, our, that worst day of our lives, they, he, uh, sorry, I just kind of, my mind went to something else. Um, there's a chick on uh, TikTok who is a veteran woman of color, and she describes how a lot of the things they have gotten correct mm-hmm. about military and people of color in the military. So my mind just went to that, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Um yeah. But he is just, I've never felt powerless, and I feel powerless. This The yeah. whole serum thing wasn't because he wanted to protect people. He just wanted to feel powerful again, and he was completely knocked down. And yeah, he was shut down, even the Wakandans almost took the uh, the shield. shield away. They're like, no, that's his like play thing, essentially, at that point. Mm-hmm. It's just his toy, let him keep it. They treated him like a little boy. But he was acting very condescending and mm-hmm. very, uh, just not... <laughs> Not respectful. Yeah. It's like, okay, your pointy sticks. Uh, let's put them away. It's like you're being disrespectful and trying to one up these people. And what they they really just wanted Zemo at that point right. in time. And even like they shut down even Bucky by deactivating his arm, 
which has like divided the internet. Like people are pissed off about it. And I get the point too, because she was like his guardian. Yeah. And they didn't fully trust Bucky at that point because there was a way to as, as essentially disarm. Well, you know, okay. disarm him. <laughs> All right. Yes. Like they disarmed him like in the most, most literally. Yeah. And- yeah. So it was that whole thing where it's like, they never fully trusted him. Well, and that was a betrayal for him. Mm-hmm. Or it just shows that, like, maybe they didn't have as much confidence in me as I thought. Maybe I could go back as, you know, that moment where they had that flashback in Wakanda where it's like, you're finally free. Side note, his acting, who who didn't cry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think for him, it's that constant battle in his head. Like, I'm not that person anymore. I'm not that person anymore. But he's had these moments in the series where he has that second guess himself where for example how easily it is for him to go into winter soldier mode at the snap of zemo's fingers i know it was all for the greater good but how easy it was and how good it felt um it's much like an addict returning to their old ways and so to have somebody that was there your sponsor if you will like you know what you're good you're free you got this we trust you and everything that was you know what, maybe we didn't 100% trust you, and then he's now thinking, maybe I'm not 100% better. It'll have to uh, it, it'll have to be addressed in this episode mm-hmm. and the next one. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Oh, yeah, I, I thought this episode was great because it kind of furthered my, the part that I like the most about this series, which is the idea that when you create power, it gets challenged. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of John's whole story arc. He's not necessarily a bad person. No. He fights in wars. He's you know He follows order. But the second his power gets challenged by something that's greater than him, he faces a tr- decision of whether or not he thinks he's a good person. And yeah. he is doing things that he's being told to do by a government that's trying to protect its people. So it's interesting to see that those but dynamics. But the government didn't tell him to take the serum. Yeah. No, no. But no, it that was a very selfish move. Well, it is interesting, though, right? Because he's doing it to get Zemo back. It's not like he's doing it to go fight anyone in that scenario. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but it is no, that same idea. he's doing it because, like, he's, it's one of those, uh, the, what is it, the, the road to good intent, or the road. Yeah, the road, the, the road of good intention, or no, wait, the road to hell, hell is, is paved, paved with, with good, good intentions. intentions. Oh, yeah, yeah, I 100% yeah, 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 agree. Yeah. But he's yeah. also went out of his way multiple times in this series to try to work with the people who are literally disobeying the government he works for. So and, it's interesting. Right. And that's kind of the big difference between... Steve Rogers and um, John Walker is that John Walker will go with what the government is going for as opposed to Chris Evans seeing Chris Evans, Steve Rogers seeing the difference between uh, the people that he's that he wants to protect and the government, which is usually not aligned with the people. And because especially the now government it's can not be corrupt. You know, you, we had Hydra. Into- yeah. <laughs> Uh, what is, what's the word, uh, infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can't always a hundred percent trust everyone because we don't know what side they truly are on. He's just a, you know, a quote unquote good soldier. That's just following orders, but what he's not, and this is what Sam is. And this is what, um, I almost said Chris Evans with Steve Rogers. (laughs) Sorry. Right. Uh, what Steve Rogers is, is that they're good men. You can't just follow. It's like you can be a rules lawyer, like, but I'm following the rules. But that doesn't mean you're doing good. Oh, which is why that whole idea of the bad guys in this uh, series is so important, right? Because they are now Mm -hmm. killing people for that same reason. Exactly. And that was another thing, too, that they needed. Like, oh, remember that these guys and it was kind of almost even the the Killmonger dilemma where you're like, well, I I really do see where he's coming from. You have your method. Yeah. You have to put something there. So they literally had to make sure that the Flag Smashers blew up those people who were, quote unquote, innocent to kind of prove that point that they're still the bad ish guys at least that they're willing to go to those lengths to to do something that they believe in because you mm-hmm. still have to remember oh no these guys are still kind of the bad guys and that whole conversation with sam and the flag smasher before you know what is it uh oh yeah you know, store brand steve or store, store brand brand Captain America, Captain America. wish brand yeah, Captain America, <laughs> uh, comes in it's just it really shows how good of a man and a human being Sam really is, Mm -hmm. how he's able to de-escalate that, how he has compassion and empathy, and he's able to connect to people, which is something Steve was able to do. Yeah, Steve, uh, or Sam coming from a therapeutic background, I think, was really key. It does really play to his uh, character well in this uh, series. And I know that as of right now, episode five is out. We haven't seen it, so we're uh, not talking about it. We'll talk about it next week. But 
Uh, it looks like Marvel is once again hyping this episode, saying a major cameo is likely coming to this episode. Now, according to Slash Film sources, the cameo is an existing Marvel Comics character who is played by a well-known performer, but it's not a character that's from the Marvel movies. And they say it's a big Marvel character, and it's a big actor who hasn't been named in the series. So it's someone mm. we didn't know that was going to be in the series and is an award-winning actor slash actress. I want it now. The speculations okay, so, are so going no, nuts. So no, so he it's a uh, it's not from the movies. Not from the movies. So it can be from any of the shows. Any of the shows. So I'm thinking like my first thought is Agents of Shield, but there's nobody. No offense to them. There's not a huge, huge actor on that show that could like that really like blows everyone away. And if somebody said like Coulson, you would be yeah. sort of correct, but he's, he's in, in the, the movies. movies. And also, I don't. I, I want I'm, Kingpin. Right. Oh. I want Kingpin. What if he's the? Uh, <laughs> well, then we'll have a lot to talk about what's on it, what's Friday. It, what's it called? Uh, oh, what if he's the power broker? broker. That's it. Oh. I called it if it is. Yeah. All right. Really my all first right. Thought. We're going to like Cause there's another theory that Sharon Carter's actually the power broker. And that's what I was thinking towards. Oh, that could be cool. Too. Which would be great because the whole time she's just like, oh, yeah, this power broker is just such a badass. And then she's just like, oh, yeah, I just have access to satellites. No and big stuff. deal. Yeah, this is just a thing that I can do. And you're not the power broker like that would that was the thing that I, made the most sense for me. So unless she's the power broker and then the kingpin's there above higher than that. I'm going to I'm going to add all the speculations. I'm just going to start throwing crap out. Oh, uh, here we go. We're back to one division stuff now. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I want to see what can make it stick. Uh, but I'm not sitting here like this needs to happen or yeah, I'm going to boycott fair. the show. I'm just like what if? <laughs> what if it's Daredevil having to come in and help out Sharon Carter so she can come back to the US? Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Mm. We'll have to see where it comes. And I mean, after, you know, we get out of here and we go and watch it, we'll probably be uh, tweeting and Facebooking all about it. So, uh, or at least messaging each other. Oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I love my little brother. So normally when I watch Falcon Winter Soldier, it is Saturday morning, right before my little brother wakes up. And oh, usually Saturday morning, but not cartoons. Right. It's my Marvel time because the rest of the day is just his cartoons. And yeah. there have been many a times he's come in and he, like, I'm partway through the episode and he's just like, eh, eh. Like, no, it's my turn. No, you yell at him back and do this, and you go, eh, eh. Then he gets louder. Oh, that He's doesn't worse. work. Oh. oh, crap. So I'm watching it. I might have to stay up late and watch it, like, yeah. when it drops. Well, good luck on uh, on uh, on uh, the morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, before you get to watching that, we do need to get to The Geek Sheet with Vicky B. What's going on, Vicky? So a movie actually premiered last week that it's one of those I, I'm curious about. I kind of want to see it. But also, it's like, uh, I'm not going to sit down and be, make it a point to watch it. It's one of those, I will watch it when I have nothing else going on and I happen to remember. All right, what is it? Uh, Thunder Force. Thunder Force? It is superhero-esque. <laughs> Featuring uh, the people you wouldn't expect to be superheroes. Interesting. Uh, it has Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. Oh, I have seen some. I don't know if I if I saw an ad on one of the streaming services or mm -hmm. something. Probably Netflix if it's going to be on Netflix. Right. But uh, or yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, and it's like I see like I saw one of them like throwing a car. So I've I've seen the trailer on Netflix because it'll pop up once I finish a series, like a background series is what I call it, as I do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were childhood best friends and they reunite like uh melissa mccarthy seems to have like just had like a weird disheveled life and octavia spencer's character is uh like i think a head of a company or a scientist of a company that is creating superpowers for people and so while she's visiting her after a long time no talk she she's like don't touch anything and of course she touches things and she gets injected with a superhero serum <laughs> of course because melissa mccarthy's character is just an s show <laughs> and so she gets super strength and then Octavia Spencer's character also has, they don't really say how or when, but she also has the uh, power of invisibility. Oh, cool. And they cool. attempt to be superhero who's in shenanigans ensue. Like, they try to stop a robbery in, like, at a convenience store. <laughs> and Octavia Spencer goes uh, uninvisible, comes visible again because she's tasing a guy and she won't stop tasing him. <laughs> and I can tell because he's always in her movies. That is Melissa McCarthy's husband in real life. Oh, funny. Does that mean this is supposed to be more of a comedy then? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it totally sounds like all of that. You yeah. Know, there's, I, because the thing is also, I saw in, uh, uh, I think I saw one picture and I didn't realize Jason Bateman is in it. What? 
Perfect. And he is as he goes as the crab, and I literally it looked like he had crab hand, like crab claws what? for hands. So it makes sense yeah, Melissa McCarthy have been in a movie, and somebody I really like right. both as an actor and as a voice actor because he's got such a booming voice is Bobby Cannavale or uh, Cannaville. Yeah, if you've never seen him. He's been in a couple episodes of uh, Big Mouth. And he was, I think on an episode, he was a sad clown or one of those clowns in Modern Family, if you remember that episode. Oh. <laughs> but he was like, he's just like this booming, just like, he looks like a very intimidating person, but he plays a character called the King. So he's like the leader of the bad guys who somehow gets superpowers as well. Um, I'm f- like, this is a Melissa McCarthy production, uh, her and her husband, uh, Ben Falcone, who produced it. But Octavia Spencer and her have been best friends for a long time, according to memes and pictures and uh, articles oh, wow. like, i think octavia caught the the i think i was reading she caught the bouquet at her, melissa's wedding <laughs> that kind All of right. thing. So it's kind of cool like you know when you get to actresses especially an actress like octavia spencer who has done some crazy dramatic roles yeah kind of go down da- like i don't want to say dumb it down but do something completely different a lot more fun yes and it's it's also kind of interesting when it comes down to the fact that it's another superhero mm-hmm. movie but again, it's turning it on its head a little bit, yeah. having some fun with it, and it's not going to be a grim, dark five people in a Justice League X esque <laughs> group trying For to do whatever. A couple hours. <laughs> we need this in the COVID, anyways. Yeah, uh, you know, it's getting twenty five tomato meter, twenty three audience score. So I don't know if this is really meant more for like kids, I guess, or, or... T- teenagers. Because mm. thirteen. Well, I mean, uh, like you said, Vicky, maybe this might be one of those ones where you watch it when you've got nothing else, else to, to watch. That sounds kind of unfortunate. <laughs> crab hands. Yeah, mm. but if you have seen it, let us know. Tell, yeah, exactly. Tell me how Jason Bateman's crab hands are, and uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And until next time, guys, stay nerdy.